Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Sci-Fi Watcher for this Twilight Zone Wednesday edition. I'm Corey Charette, and Mr. Brian Lee is over there. What's going on, Brian? Hey, Corey. Good to be here. You ready to talk about the penultimate episode of Twilight Zone this week? Let's do it. Okay, it's called the Black Scorpion. A uh, Black Scorpion. Boy, I can't even get the title right. It's called the Blue Scorpion. Episode nine from this first season. It came out on May twenty third, twenty nineteen. Written by Glenn Morgan, directed by Craig William McNeil. The Chris O'Dowd episode, which finally get to. Yeah. Wait for, for a while. Uh, yeah, it's, it feels like the show. We finally got a different feel in this episode than the rest of them. I think we do. And, and I like how this this episode starts out where Chris O'Dowd is trying to get, you know, to see his his father. And it kind of pans around the room and you see all this cool memorabilia and music going. I like that look. Yeah. And he's on the phone with his wife and it sounds like they're getting divorced and he moved out. And you're trying to put pieces of you're trying to hear the conversation as looking around the room, seeing like what's going on here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And of course, he finds his father dead and shot himself in, I guess, the head. He shot himself. We don't know where he shot him, but yeah, he, he, I assume he's in the head. Then we see the bullet shell on the floor with the name Otis, the name of his father on it, and it fade, the name fades away. Mm hmm. And that's of course when the craziness starts. Yeah, of course, the police think it might be him, or they, they kind of suspect it might be him. Yeah, but that kind of goes away real quick, so we don't have to worry. It's not one of those things that just annoys you throughout the whole episode. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, it, it's it's suicide. We have proof it is. All right. He left a note, says, I love him more than you. Right. And he also finds the box with the bullet in it. And Doesn't he find it right after that, or was it later? I forgot. It was later he found it, because he was moving stuff out of his closet, and he found the safe behind the closet okay, you're with, right, a, you're with right. the light on. And a heart-shaped box with a hole in the box, too, which I didn't really pay attention to at first. I don't even remember that. Okay. There's a hole in the top of the box so light can get in. Ah, that's right. Uh That's right. That's right. Because I saw it, and then I see the hole. I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm like, whatever. And then later on, it's like, it doesn't like the dark. Like, that's why you put the hole in the box. Makes total sense now. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, So we finally get an episode where... We have an object that's the the main thing in this story. It's not a person or an event. It's an actual physical object, which I love that. I love story. I love stories like this where you have a mythology built around something like this gun, right? And you, you get little bits and pieces of this what this object is to him later on, which mm-hmm. I like. It dulls it out in little chunks. I love that kind of story element. He finds the bullet with Jeff on it, which is his name, and then all of a sudden. Everybody he runs into is named Jeff, which is very unusual, even though it's a common name. Right. It's just too, too common. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Jeff, uh, he was walking up to his his work or school or whatever, and like, they're, the two girls are talking about Jeff. These two guys are named Jeff. Dog, na- <laughs> dog was named Jeff. The dog was named Jeff, yeah. Which was very unusual, so you know. But I mean, you know, then I love how we get the story behind this, you know, how he calls a gun shop to sell it. And the guy says, what's the serial number on it? Registration number. And he reads it over and he goes, is that a blue scorpion on it? And he goes, you know, you're one of seven people that own this gun. Shea Gravaro was looking for the gun. Legend says that you don't find the gun, it finds you. And I'm like, ooh, I'm really liking this now. I like it. I I want the blue scorpion now. Mm. (laughs) It was kind of scary when he's on the phone. He's he's willing to sell the gun, and all of a sudden the gun just goes off. Right, that was creepy out of nowhere. Yeah, and uh, he's like, "Did you have the bullet in the chamber? What's going on?" Yeah, and then of course the guy tells him that you know the legend says it doesn't like the dark, so always make sure you have it in the light and stuff like that. Like, hmm. which explains that like, was so creepy with that guy in the corner just shows up. Yeah, like his spirits like a- in the gun. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, very creepy. I like creepy. Oh yeah, me too. That was me dropping a pen. Ah, we don't need a pen. Yeah, it was. uh, I just, I just love that whole mythos behind this thing. Well, as the same time he's and he then he seemed like he was getting weird. I was kind of getting scared when he carries the gun around with him in the backpack. Kind of uses it like like he's he's braver now because he has a gun with him. It's like I don't. I'm kind of kind of afraid here. 
Well, it's it's like it, it, he he grows an attachment to him after he uh, he goes to the uh, gun range to shoot it. And of course, to me, that was telegraphed on how that was going to go. But that was so it felt so awkward with him walking up to the uh, the cash register and like explaining about the gun and all this and mm-hmm. showed them showing them the bullet with his name on it. And of course, they can't see the name. It's like it's just a bullet. Right. <laughs> And he starts like tilting the gun at his side and he's doing all these movie shootings and shit like that, stuff like that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, you know, it's just like, okay, it's a little hokey here, but, but you knew what's going to happen at the end. Once he gets to that last, that one bullet in the clip, it's not going to fire. Yeah. I, I figured as much. And it was like, obvious because obviously the bullet needs to be used on Jeff. And my question at one point in the middle of the episode is, which Jeff? I'm thinking he's not going to shoot himself. I had a feeling it wasn't for him. The bullet was not for him. I didn't. I wasn't convinced, though. I but was. He was convinced. I didn't understand why Jeff was convinced because when it stopped, he's like, oh, you would never hurt me. He was like rubbing it. It's like, you would never hurt me. Right? Yeah, which to me made no sense. I'm like, well, then your name's on it. If you put it up to your head, you could probably kill yourself, but you can't go shoot people that are not named Jeff. I want to know the backstory of Otis too. That was like in the back of my mind. Like why, what did what happened to Otis? Why did he kill himself? Or was it just that was his destiny? Yeah. And why did he did he love the gun more than his son? I mean, that's why did he why did he write that note? Right. That was so there was so much yeah, there's so much backstory there I was kind of interested in. Mm-hmm. I mean, then he, you know, he's going to talk to the lawyer whose name is Jeff. To talk about the the wife divorcing him because she fell in love with another guy whose name is Jeff. And it's just like (laughs) coincidence after uh coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. So my question is like, who is he going to shoot that's named Jeff? Like I'm thinking my, and my, my gut feeling is like, he's going to go shoot the guy that she's with now. Mm -hmm. I mean, before we even get to that part, I'm like, he's going to shoot him. You thought that way back then, huh? Yeah. I felt that's where it was going to go. I mean, that's the beauty of this story. It could have been any of those Jeffs. Yeah, they could have written like 20 different endings to this, which, right. which would have worked out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, then we, we kind of fast forward to the, uh, you know, Jeff stalking, you know, new Jeff mm-hmm. at his home when someone breaks into his car. Yeah, which like, hello. At first, I thought it was like Jeff that was the, her ex's new boyfriend like he was like outside and he saw him over there and he's like he was going to stop him from doing something stupid but he was at the boyfriend's house he was looking at the boyfriend yeah i thought i think but it was his wife's house you know who i thought it was no i thought it was the gun shop guy i thought he had been following him so he could steal blue scorpion huh i didn't think about the who it really was i thought it was that guy, because he kept calling him and calling yeah. him. He's like, I really want your gun. I'll give you whatever you want. Mm-hmm. I thought he was like secretly following him. And then he's finally breaks the window and he wants to steal the blue scorpion. Yeah. And, and I, once that happens, I'm like, I know where this is going. Because you see the gun fall onto the dashboard. And I'm like, the gun's going to go off on its own. Because we already know it's done it before. Right. Right. But then after that, I didn't. I, the way it ended, I did not expect it to end the way it did. Because I didn't either. Well, because it's funny because we found out earlier in the episode and it was a throwaway line to me is when Jeff went to sneak into his old house, he told his wife, be careful. There are, you know, or she said, one of them said that there are a lot of break-ins in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And I'm totally like oblivious. I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. Like, I, I'll just, I'll just throw that away and not even think about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. It was like planting the seed and I totally forgot about that mm-hmm. seed. And then we find out this was the guy, his name was Jeff, obviously. And Yeah. The gun killed him, and and then I laugh after that. I'm like, you know, she the the wife gave a concession, gave you know Jeff what he wanted, pretty much. They divorced amicably, and he gets the chair of the anthropology department, and uh, gets the gun back from the police, and bye bye, it's over with. He gets rid of the gun. Yeah, I did not expect this to have a happy ending. I totally, when coming into this, thought it was going to end like Otis. You know? I did I did too. I was expecting something to happen. And it was just like, and I was going to think he's going to try to throw the gun and it's not going to go in or it's going to show up at his house or something. 
Like a Ouija board, kind of? Yeah, kind of like no matter what happens, it's still going to stay with him. And no, he had one bullet with with the name of Jeff on it. He used it on Jeff. His time with the gun is over with. Well, it, also, when he got the gun back, it could have spiraled from there. He could go back. He could have gone back to being bad, mm-hmm. you know, but it didn't. No. Which which was cool. Mm-hmm. Did not expect that. And then um, we see the kids with the going fishing. They find the gun on the shore and it's like, ooh, well, I'm not liking this now. Well, I mean, it just perpetuates the story of this. The gun yeah. keeps going on. It finds another another subject. Mm-hmm. I love it. It was it was the best episode so far this season. It was. It was a solid Twilight Zone. It's fitting of the name mm-hmm. for once. Yeah, it's about time. I mean, I've been dragging my feet for eight episodes, and I'm like, oh. I was expecting so much more, and I'm like, okay. I'm like, I saw the trailer for this one. I'm like, this one looks good. This one could be good. And then, like, it ended, and I'm like, I like this one. It didn't. It didn't Finally. fail. It didn't fail. Twilight Zone seal of approval. Finally. Yeah. And uh, how would you rate this on a scale of one to ten for this one? I mean, this is a solid nine, nine and a half. It's up there. Yeah, I gave it eight and a half in my book. It's if you're going to watch one episode of the show, this is the one to watch. This is the one that gives me hope that this is still a good show. But it took a lot of iterations before we can get to this good episode. It did. I, sad. I think we need more of these um, object based episodes and not mm-hmm. people people based or whatever. But we will have to see. No, I think it was also it was good writing and good directing. Mm-hmm. You know, it so it's all comes down to the writing. It really does. If you have a good script and you don't basically rip off something that you've seen before, you do something different with it. Yeah, and, and there have been other object um, episodes. I just couldn't remember them at the time. I was talking to Corey before this, but we found one where there was one called Button Button from the 86 reboot. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't the original, but it was another, they've been other object based um, episodes. Oh yeah. Even the original has, has them too. Um, I can't think of any right now, but there are well, like um, the, uh, the chatty Kathy doll or whatever it was called talking Tina doll for the, from the original. Mm-hmm. Hi, I'm talking Tina and I'm going to kill you, you know, type of things like that. We've yeah. had we've had we've had them before, but yeah, it's it's nice to finally see it in in this this version of the show. Yeah. So if you're gonna, yeah, if you're gonna watch one episode, check out the Blue Scorpion. And that's we that's it for this week's episode. I want to thank Brian for being here. And Brian, where can we find you online? I can find me on Twitter, Instagram. Just look for Brian says. And as always, we're at SayProductions.com slash sci fi watcher. Check us out there. Three episodes a week we're doing right now, so check them all out. SayProductions.com slash sci fi watcher. That's it for this Wednesday edition. Until next time, have a great one.